meteorologist Mark Homer, and as always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. We have a lot to talk about here. This is going to be a very long video, so I do have timestamps down below if you need to skip ahead to any portions of this. Uh, tropical update, Invest 95L and 96L as well. We have the 95 out in the Atlantic, and we have 96 off the southeast coast of the United States. It has a narrow window to develop as well. So we're going to watch 96 out there the next several days, especially towards Wednesday as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. We also have two major heat waves going on, one in the Northeast and one in the Pacific Northwest. So without wasting any more time, we're going to get right into it. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the bell button so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. And as always, don't forget to post a question, comment in the section down below if you wish, and hit smash that like button. Let's get to uh, 5,000 subscribers. We shattered 4,000 subscribers. I want to thank you all for helping make that possible. Let's get right into it, shall we? Taking a look at the tropics here, we could be having Tropical Storm Danny forming off the coast of the southeastern U.S. I have it at 60% chance now. We've had a massive flare-up here on this Sunday across the uh, southeastern, just off the southeastern coast of the U.S. It is moving rapidly towards the southeast coast. Um, it is getting its act together. It is battling an upper level low to the northwest, but for that matter, it is exploding with development here. So we could be looking at a tropical depression and, do I dare say it? possibly tropical storm danny um the major impacts would be heavy rains and high surf and waves as well we are watching invest 95 also out in the atlantic here anywhere from a 25 to a 40 percent 25 percent in the next 36 to 48 hours 40 percent beyond wednesday as it approaches the lesser antilles and eventually potentially puerto rico the u.s virgin islands as well as potentially the caribbean it all depends on how strong this gets. GFS is a bit stronger, potentially closing off the low before the Lesser Antilles. And then if it's staying stronger, say Tropical Storm, that, or beyond that, it would recurve and find a weakness in the subtropical ridge and be able to move towards portions of Puerto Rico and eventually uh, move between Bermuda and the United States. If it remains weaker system, like the CMC is kind of hinting here, um, by the time it approaches the Lesser Antilles, it would bend a little bit more towards the west, uh, enter the Caribbean, stay a weaker system, and then eventually it could have some sort of window of development by the time it reaches the Gulf of Mexico. One thing I want to note, systems this time of year um, are very hard to develop out this far, Cape Verde's out in the Atlantic here, and they move at a very good clip too, like 20-25 miles per hour plus. So the thunderstorm activity on the southern end of the system, it has a hard time wrapping around the southern end as it's ejecting further west at such a high speed um, because of that. Because it's moving west and then those westerly winds on the southern end of it tend to get obscured a bit and canceled out. So we'll have to watch that, see if this low can close off. And if it does, it all depends on how strong it gets, uh, what path it takes here. So there we have it. Very active tropical Intertropical Convergence Zone, Saharan dust is slightly increasing, although Invest 95 will be heading into an area of Saharan dust as it approaches the Lesser Antilles as well. So we'll have to watch that as well. Tropics remaining very active here. Taking a look at the Gulf of Mexico satellite, don't really have too much to talk about here. There is an upper level low uh, just south of Texas. It's moving, it will move into Texas here. I don't expect any development out of that. Some showers and thunderstorms persisting off the Florida coast. This time of year, we do have to watch for persistent showers and thunderstorms for potential development, but at this part of the game, I don't see any development. And taking a look at the Atlantic satellite here, your eyes taking a look off the southeast coast to the U.S. See that big elongated area of convection you see right around the center there moving really rapidly towards the south carolina georgia uh, coastline here that is uh, invest 96 this could potentially become tropical storm danny and there you have out in the atlantic invest 95 it's not looking as great today it is a very broad area of low pressure though so these tend to also have a very hard time developing because they have to get much better organized before they can take on any strength and then ITCZ out here off the coast of Africa remaining so very active. And taking a look at the southeast here, this is Invest 96. Uh, the potential for some, maybe some development here off the southeast coast. Window of opportunity is very thin though. And as you can see, it moves from, it has a little bit moving towards the northwest. Also, let's take a look at the CMC. Taking a look at the CMC model here with Invest 96. A little bit, maybe a little bit more potent 
I don't see, you know, a close completely closed off low. It's, it's still an indicating kind of an open wave disturbance here. But we'll watch it here. You know, June is one of those months we can really have some sort of flare-up, and we can have quite a few surprises here. All right, taking a look at the GFS uh, model here for Invest95L here out in the Atlantic. You can see there's times in the southwest part, right in the south-central part of your screen there, and you see it moves towards the Leeward and the Windward Islands there uh, later on in the forecast period as we approach the Wednesday time frame into Thursday, Friday. The GFS is a little bit stronger and further to the north, affecting impacting areas of the northern Lesser Antilles into Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, and keeping that high pressure pretty strong to the north here. Now, let's take a look at the CMC. And the CMC is a little bit weaker and further to the south. It picks up on a little bit of a closed low. Um, you can see south-central part of your screen heading westward there. Um, a little bit interesting to note, it pretty much keeps it further to the west and to the south, indicating that it's going to be more of a weaker type storm. It's a little bit conflicting here, especially on days four or five with the GFS. So we'll see. We'll continue to watch it here. We have a couple days to watch it. It is moving pretty rapidly to the west here. So the Lesser Antilles, Leeward, Windward Islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, we'll watch it here for you. And Joe Drejos from the Johnson City, New York area, just uh, near the 201 Bridge, Susquehanna River. Look at this. Looking westward, on Friday, June 25th. A beautiful way to end the week here across the southern tier of upstate New York. Very pristine, beautiful, calm, nice capture there. Thank you, Joe, for sending that photo in. Nice way to end the week. And Robert Stone here from the Jacksonville area of Florida. Take a look at this. He had some stormy skies here on Saturday, later Saturday afternoon, early evening, uh, June 26th. And storms were firing across the area, heavy downpours. Very nice captures of the low cloud deck here, Robert. Thank you for sending those photos in on your tr beautiful travels. Taking a look at the upper air pattern across North America, this is very reminiscent of later in July. Look at the massive ridge out west here and a ridge in the east. Two very high pressure cells really blanketing the area with unprecedented heat, especially in the Pacific Northwest where you're really not used to this. It doesn't matter if it's a drier heat. You're not used to 105, 110 degrees in interior Washington State and Oregon and Idaho. This is just unprecedented. This is really bad and hopefully we don't get any sort of wildfire activity because this this is just not good at all. This is really going to dry things out and those temperatures are just going to soar with the humidity dropping off a cliff. Back east here, we have that ring of fire around this big ridge. Another warm cell here, strong ridge. Extremely hot in the northeast, mid to upper 90s pretty much every day with dew points in the low to mid 70s. That will make the heat index values approaching 105 in some areas 110. So just downright miserable here across the northeast and watching the tropics here continuing in the southeast. And taking a look at your Sunday across the Northeast, look at this. If you have access to an air conditioner inside, I would just do it because this is a day that you probably don't really want to go, especially outside in, especially interior upstate New York, uh, eastern Pennsylvania, parts of New England like Concord. Look at that mid 90s, 95, 96 in Binghamton and Syracuse as well. Uh, New York City, a little bit cooler towards the ocean, 91 to 93 in Boston, 95 in Washington, D.C. So, there you have it. The air quality is not so great either uh, across the Northeast. So it's uh, it's one of those things where you probably are just going to want to stay inside. We'll probably maybe have a stray shower or thunderstorm uh, to the northern part of New York State, western Pennsylvania, northwestern Pennsylvania as well, um, into Ontario. But this is only 20 to 30 percent chance, and none of these will be severe unless you get towards west of Toronto. Across the southeast this Sunday, taking a look, it's the calm before the storm. What could be potentially a tropical disturbance or even tropical storm. Danny moving in on Monday, but for the most part, we're dry. We have a 20 to 30 percent chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms, mainly along the Gulf Coast states here. And looking across the northeast for your Monday, look at this. Just a downright miserable day when it comes to heat. Heat and humidity making the heat index values feel more like 105 in many areas plus. And look at that, 97, a very popular number, D.C., Binghamton, Albany, New York City. Look at that, 99 in Concord and both Boston. We will have the chance of a 20 to 30% chance of th shower or thunderstorm 
after 3 p.m. across parts of the northeast, even some that could be strong uh, parts of Lake Ontario, Lake Erie region. But for the most part, I think we will be dry and it will be very humid and hot. And taking a look at your southeast for your Monday, we could be looking at Tropical Storm Danny or a tropical disturbance. It remains to be seen how quickly this develops. It has a 36-hour window here to develop before it makes landfall. But if it does make landfall as a tropical storm, it will it would be Danny, and it would be making landfall across parts of Georgia and South Carolina. And the moisture would be felt from northern Florida, Georgia, and into South Carolina as well. Potentially some severe weather too, as happens with landfalling tropical storms or even a tropical disturbance. So we'll be looking at rainfall in the order of an inch or more, probably one to two, maybe as much as three plus inches, potentially around the Charleston area, Savannah, Georgia, and maybe Jacksonville, Florida as well. And the Northeast for your Tuesday, continued hot. Look at that, Boston approaching 100 degrees. This is just downright dangerous. Dew points into the low to mid 70s will make it feel more like 105, 110 plus in many of these areas 95 in new york 92 binghamton 94 scranton 98 in harrisburg and dc this is downright miserable you see the front is slipping to the south though burlington 86 there's some evidence of it 87 in toronto we have some late day strong thunderstorms across the north country of upstate new york western new york as well as northwest extreme northwestern pennsylvania but for the most part most areas will stay dry especially in the lighter green zone darker green zone to closer to the front potential is greater for a chance of showers and thunderstorms developing between 3 and 9 p.m. And Tuesday across the southeast, that uh, tropical disturbance continues to move inland, pretty much weakening at this point. But showers and thunderstorms will continue across parts of South Georgia, Panhandle of Florida as it heads westward here, bringing some rain, anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch of rain additional. High pressure, that Bermuda High extension off this uh, South Carolina, North Carolina coastline here. And temperatures will stay, oh, this is interesting, continuing to stay cooler than the Northeast, although Nashville 95, Raleigh 94, even 93, and Tampa. And here it is Wednesday across the Northeast. We start to get hints that the front will start to try to crash down here on this massive ridge of high pressure that's been keeping the heat on across the Northeast. And evidence is there. You can see 79 in Toronto, um, 82 in Buffalo, still in the upper 80s in Binghamton, and 96 Harrisburg, 97 in New York. Just a downright awful day as far as heat and humidity. 99 in D.C., so approaching 100. Boston, we, we only cool it down about 4 degrees from the day before, 96, 93 in Concord. So continue to stay out of that heat and humidity. Uh, showers and thunderstorms likely developing in the darker shade in green. And look at the yellow zone, increasing the chance of showers and thunderstorms that could be strong to potentially severe uh, 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts and large hail potential. But as I said before, this is not going to be like a wide scale organized area. So we're not looking at anything major as far as an outbreak. And Wednesday across the southeast, here we go. We pretty much have every area at least in a 20 to 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms. That front moving across the upper uh, Appalachians here uh, towards the mid-Atlantic uh, northeast region. You can see uh, just north of Raleigh and Norfolk here. We've got the chance of severe, strong to severe thunderstorms. As I said before, not a severe, not a major severe weather outbreak, but enough to put us into the yellow zone here, slight risk. Um, with damaging wind, large hail potential, not really looking at any tornadoes, so to speak. But most of the southeast, we have those proverbial afternoon showers and thunderstorms developing mainly between 3 and 6 p.m. Uh, late afternoon, early evening. So there you have it. Temperatures once again cooler than the northeast. And extended forecast for my hometown viewers from the upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York, northeast Pennsylvania, from Binghamton to Scranton, and all points in between. Look at this. Sunday. Those are normally warmer valley floor locations, 96. Wow, look at that, 97 in Monday across the Northeast. Stay in the air conditioning. Heat indexes will be over 100, pretty much 100 to 105 likely. Dew points heading into the low to mid 70s, just making the field downright awful. We start to get maybe a chance of a stray shower, thunderstorm both Monday and Tuesday. Better chance on Tuesday, uh, up towards 50%, maybe. You know how it works around the Binghamton area. You may or may not get it. Most areas around there, you, you get the 50% chance. 92 for a high, a little bit cooler, but you can't call it that much cool, cooler with the heat and humidity. Wednesday, showers and thunderstorms likely a better chance. 88, and look at that Thursday. The front starts to approach. We break down the ridge a bit. 83, maybe a quarter to a half an inch of rainfall with those showers and thunderstorms. 
as always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button down below so you're alerted when I come out with one of these video updates. This tropical season is going to continue to get a lot more busier. Facebook, give my Facebook page some love, Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern. Also, it's MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com, and Twitter, WX Northeastern. So, there you have it. Thank you for joining me.